So good morning, everyone. I hope all are doing good. And thanks for taking out your time and joining us. And uh, good morning, Subana, Dr. Subana. Well, I welcome you to the session. Thank you. Thanks a lot, um, Vimles, for Great. inviting me in this session. Great. It's our pleasure. I think, you know, uh, uh, before we get started, you know, uh, I would like to, you know, uh, invite our guest and I would like to formally introduce to all of our audience today. So uh, again, good morning, everyone. I hope you all are doing well. And I welcome you all for the Tech Saturday webinar with Times Pro. And today we have a session on a very interesting topic. Uh, that is quantum computing industry insights, career prospects and skill recruitment requirements. So especially quantum is a very niche area in the tech. And to do the honor today, we have a Dr. Subana Roy. Uh, before I hand over this platform to her, I would have the pleasure of introducing her to all of you formally. So currently, Dr. Subana is working as Associate Partner, Chief Data Scientist and Quantum Ambassador for IBM. And she is a seasoned thought leader in data science, responsible for developing state-of-art solutions in AI, leveraging the latest techniques like deep learning, neural network, game theory, etc. So formulating effective price strategy for all the retail and oil and gas sector. And also she has developed the first kind of industry-ready application in reinforcement learning. And, and also uh, leverages large language model and generative AI to build industry application in contextual search. And Subarna plays the role of IBM quantum ambassador and presents IBM point of view to the clients and academic institution. So uh, her analytics and data science journey, she has over 14 years of work experience in guiding clients in their end-to-end -end analytics journey in various domains like banking, retail, CPG, and she has a versatile experience in developing methodologies like uh, methodologies and technologies for analytics models on credit risk, fraud management, uh, 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 regulatory risk, opportunity conversion, trade promotion optimization, debt forecasting, and social network analysis. So prior to IBM, uh, Dr. Subarna has worked for HSBC, TCS, and ANZ Bank. And when, I, when it comes to our significant achieve, achievements in IBM, she developed innovation quantitative techniques to deploy a uh, few models for also leading uh, a minimum uh, equipment manufacturer with an outcome of 25% reduction in equipment downtime. She is an expert in unsupervised learning, deep learning, auto end course, and also quantum computing. And she has won the Outstanding Technical Achievement Award in IBM, which is the highest technical award in IBM. And also, she has been engaged in mentoring industry professional uh, uh, NASMO, NASMO initiated driven and across IBM. And in the year 2018, she has received an award from the Analytics India magazine as top 10 data scientist in the India. And when it comes to her education, she holds a PhD application of econometrics and game theory from Indira Gandhi Institute of Development Research. And she has also published multiple papers in international journals and also co-authored several white papers. So it is great pleasure to have you, Dr. Subarna, with us. And I think uh, uh, I would like to hand over the platform to you. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Vimles, for that nice introduction. I really appreciate that. Um, so a very good uh, morning to all of you uh, participants um, who are here to hear about quantum computing. Um, so let me share. Uh, so today uh, I will be discussing about uh, quantum computing. Uh, so uh, earlier I presented on Industry 4.0, what is the vision and what is, what is the roadmap around it. Um, I will touch upon that topic. Uh, it may be a little bit uh, repetitive for some of you, but... Um, it would not be a bad idea in the sense that uh, you need a certain, everybody needs a certain amount of reiteration in this field. Okay. And then I will go into the skills requirement. Um, also share with you the resources. Uh, many of you had come to me asking me about what are the different resources that you can go through so that you can have understanding about quantum computing and then take that uh, that um, understanding forward. Okay, 
so i will talk about that as, that as well so but before that again a brief introduction of quantum computing i i know some of you are joining new so for them i to just build that context i will start with um with the history uh, what is entanglement superposition um interference so these are topics uh, which are um, initiated uh, in quantum mechanics means quantum mechanics is the father of uh, of this field so i will talk about a bit on the uh, people who contributed uh, to this this field to a great extent and how this field has evolved what are the applications um, i will specifically go into the quantum safe cryptography app, which is now uh, one of the potential application and in uh, in fact a threat to many of the classical applications right so classical uh, computing uh, devices so i will go through that a little bit and then i will uh, go over uh, what is required uh, to build a build quantum skills uh, and uh, what are the different job opportunities potential job opportunities that are there um, now and in future um, and and also um, some of the softwares uh, uh, which you which you can start with to learn about and reiterate your knowledge okay so <clears throat> um so so let me first start with the history of entanglement so in uh, 2022 three physicists um so they won the nobel prize for their groundbreaking work on entanglement and as you might have already known about it know about it so what is entanglement so entanglement is 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 a very mysterious phenomenon uh, where uh, one aspect of a particle um, in a paired electron i uh, mean in a entangled pair so in entangled pair means two electrons are uh, two protons are paired if one aspect of one of them uh, is known so then you know the aspect of the other particle as well so however far away these two particles are and whatever lies between them in this picture you can see that um two particles uh, um maybe they are uh, like millions of light years away and there are many particles in between but there is a certain correlation among, among them so it's like if you know something about the uh, one particle if you take one particle from the paired electron and measure it in space and you know something about that particle you know about the other particle uh, uh, means immediately and this is something that um, the scientists uh, at that point of time especially einstein found it very very um, difficult to uh, explain and so um, einstein himself has mentioned about this and he said that this is something like spooking action at a distance and this is a famous quote okay but uh, so for many years uh, like scientists uh, they they actually didn't believe this so lot of research and new uh, experiments uh, even new methodology in research uh, was introduced to understand this phenomenon but uh, this uh, went unexplained uh, for for quite a long time but now um, physicists they have actually started uh, taking it as something which is real and it is the whole a uh, new uh, thought process has been built means it's it's a new way of thinking and that is uh, something that has been also borrowed in in the computing world okay so a whole new uh, paradigm uh, which uh, no longer exists in classic means it's it's something that classical world 
uh, is not able to explain. So this quantum computing is an offshoot of this whole new thought process. Okay, now coming to uh, what is superposition and entanglement, so how they are related. So let me talk about, uh, as you see in the left diagram, this is like an atom. Uh, so atom where uh, you have the electrons at different orbits. Now uh, electrons, uh, I mean, how you measure uh, how, um, their position or location. Just like uh, we are at, like, how do we measure where we are located? We say we are uh, at X degree of latitude and uh, Y degree of longitude, or we uh, talk about X, Y, Z axis. And so whatever, we, we talk, talk about position um, by uh, measuring a certain uh, quantity okay so we measure like uh, latitude longitude uh, so point in an axis uh, point in in the plane so that way uh, we give a mathematical expression to that so similarly electrons um, they they have a certain um, a way of measuring their position so there there are uh, four different uh, as um, ways to measure it. So principal orbital angular momentum, magnetic and electron spin. So now spin is something that I will be talking about because this is relevant to the concepts of superposition and entanglement. So no matter with what state, uh, what spin states uh, an electron is, an electron spin means it's not like it is spinning, It it is, it is something that you see here, either it is a spin up state or a spin down state, okay? And, and there is an another state uh, which, is, uh, uh, which is prevailing in the quantum world that is called the superposition state where an electron can remain uh, in two states together spin up state and spin down spin down state and uh, so it's like when only you measure that electron you come to know the about its state okay so but the superposition state is is of interest because it leads to lot of computing power so because so it it has high amount of power ingrained in it and similar to uh, the so so it is something like um, if you if you have heard about Schrodinger, uh, this famous scientist, atomic physicist. So um, Schrodinger has once described uh, this phenomenon in the form of like a thought experiment. Imagine that um, in a cupboard there is a cat, and there is some uh, radioactive materials uh, within that cupboard. And the radioactive material might uh, become poisonous, means it starts emitting radioactive uh, so materials within the cupboard. And then there is a 50% chance that it happens and the cat like will die. So, but it may not also happen. So when it is in the cupboard and the cupboard is closed, the cat is uh, somewhat in a state of alive or dead, okay? So you never know. So it's, it's in a superposition state. Only when you open the cupboard, you come to know that uh, whether it is actually dead or alive. So it, it only when you measure, it is like it is, uh, you, you come to know its state, okay? So it's similar to that. Similar, we have a bit which is the fundamental um, a unit of classical computing, which can only exist like it, whether it is it will be either a one or a zero. But in when we talk about quantum computing, uh, it's like qubit which can take two states together, uh, one as well as zero. So it's like it's represented as a vector. It is, it, it, it's like zero, one, 
uh, vector which is represented in this in this a funny form like a kit and a bra. So this is kit. And so zero is uh, where it is one and zero. It's a vector of element one uh, of, on the upper row and zero on the lower row. And uh, so it, it is also represented in this form. So um, cupids, again, when you measure, you, uh, you will be able to get the classical value of it. So it will be, again, transformed to bit. So it will no longer remain uh, quantum. It will be, it will start showing the properties of classical computing. So <clears throat> that's and and what happens is the so with the spin up and spin down state or, or one or zero state of a qubit. Uh, so if you measure as uh, an electron as one or qubit. Uh, let's say as uh, measure an electron as spin up or qubit as one, what happens is that whenever you measure it repeatedly, you will get the same values again and again. Now, um, entanglement is somewhat uh, when two electron interacts. Okay, so when when they interact, they show a certain amount of correlation. So if one electron is up, then showing a spin-up state, uh, then the other electron uh, will show a spin-down state the moment they are measured. So this is one type of correlation. But it may so happen also how you, that means it's how the correlation is, is designed basically. So it may so happen if the electron is a uh, superposed electron is measured, it may be at a spin-up state and the other also may show a spin-up state. So uh, it's like um, a correlation with, with, with different direction or same direction. Now, it is also, a, there is a very famous anal analogy here. So, there is, uh, let's say, two baskets. Um, you don't know which basket contains apple and which one contains orange. Um, but the moment you open one of the basket and you know that uh, this one is apple, then the other basket is automatically oranges. Okay, so it it's like uh, similar to that. Now, this as I said, that entanglement phenomenon uh, as a phenomenon remained unexplained for a long period of time. Einstein uh, tried explaining it, saying that there is some hidden variable which is uh, applied on both the electrons. So, so they are actually uh, uh, behaving in the same way. Um, so uh, in a correlated manner. But this hidden variable, uh, the explanation of this was later contradicted by um, another famous scientist, mathematician, Bell, uh, and he came up with an equation, inequality, actually. And he showed that that inequality is, uh, is uh, established when there is a it means basically when there is a classical phenomenon, so when the hidden variable uh, phenomenon exists, but it may not hold true in the quantum phenomenon. Okay, so so now in 2022, the physicists uh, I was talking about, they proved that uh, in quantum uh, cases, uh, the theory of a hidden variable doesn't hold true and Bell's inequality doesn't hold true. So this is some, so it's a purely, so entanglement is a purely quantum phenomenon and that was proved. So um, now talking about a bit of some more fundamentals around it. So you can see uh, the bits and the qubits again like the classical bits, which are taking the value of one and zero and quantum bits, which can take zero and one simultaneously. And this allows a quant, allows a speed up because 
many states are together at the same time. Um, so here, uh, so like for example, uh, a plate can only in classical world, or in classical bit uh, concept, a plate can be only empty or filled, okay? But in case of qubit, uh, you can take the analogy of, uh, let's say a plate, which is one third of, uh, one third filled and two, two third not filled or half filled, half not filled. Similarly, like uh, you can get a head uh, zero when you are tossing a coin, you get either and the coin uh, comes to the uh, means you can see uh, it, it comes to the earth uh, when it uh, so it takes a value of zero when it is head and takes a value of one it is tail and it will take either of this value right but when it is a spin uh, in spinning state when it is in the air there is a 50% chance of landing on zero, 50% chance of landing on one. So it's something like in the air, it is in a state which is in a superposition state. So we don't know with what is happening to that. And this is of course for a biased coin, like uh, unbiased coin where, where you have this 50% chance. But in case of biased coin, and you know where, where exactly is the bias, you can say like, let's say like 70% chance of landing on zero, a 30% chance of landing on one, okay? So, so this is, um, and, and then uh, when, uh, so there is another thing that's very important to understand and again, a quantum mechanics concept like interference. So when you uh, use a headphone, so your headphone, uh, you have, uh, so, uh, there is a noise cancellation mechanism. So how does that work? So, so uh, the noise has its own amplitude and phases. So it, like it's a wave. So it will have phases and amplitude. And then there is a, a ca cancellation noise tone that is sent to headphone. And that is the mechanism within that. That actually cancels these phases and Mm, uh, amplitude to so in such a way basically so that uh, you get a soothing uh, voice so it's just the music that you hear okay S similarly in case of uh, quantum computing so what happens is you can consider uh, like a large superposition state okay so so which consists of many states together Okay, so uh, um, within a, a means a, a qubit. Okay, so qubit is like in multiple states, it is sent it to the quantum algorithm. And quantum algorithm is a sequence of uh, superposition and uh, entanglement again. So this mechanism, what it does is it plays around with the phases and amplitudes and, and then it comes up and comes up with a certain um, and cancels out some of them and comes up with uh, with the phase and amplitude that's the most desirable outcome so it's something related to the the, the uh, music that you want to hear if, I mean, so that the amount the way the cancellation happens the cancellation tone is sent similarly here uh, the same mechanism comes I mean similar mechanism is it's just an analogy that it it the quantum algo plays the similar role in uh, manipulating the phases manipulating the amplitudes okay so the desired superposition state is reached and that is the outcome so uh, so many there are many quantum algorithms and uh, how they lead to the speed up so something that before that, let me talk about uh, the what is the case for quantum. So a single qubit takes two classical values at once. Every one operation on the qubit is done on both values. Okay, so hence qubit like it it is it is like one qubit two which has two bits inside it. So it can take. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So, so four different uh, values it can take. So this is uh, basically this leads to the quantum speed up. So 
uh, one qubit which has two bits, uh, then two qubits, four bits. Uh, so similarly, three qubits has eight bits and how accordingly the power of compu computing increases. Okay, so, so another thing that is important to know is uh, like as you increase the input size, how the complexity uh, of um, of the algorithm uh, increases in throwing the output. So if you increase uh, the input size in case of uh, a linear uh, kind of algorithm, I means it 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 just linearly increases the complexity. But when it you are multiplying two numbers or squaring a number it increases in much more uh, like you can see that the curve is steep so uh, with small degree of increase it the complexity increases in many fold similarly a uh, square root of uh, that number input size it doesn't increase so much as the linear case okay so so but when it comes to factoring let's say uh, you want to factor number 15 which is easy so it it is it will not take much more much time to do that but when it is a big number like this so it increases the time complexity much more and here is uh, where the shores algorithm comes in shores algorithm is another is a quantum algorithm written in with the tenets of quantum computing which has basically uh, given um, means uh, which has increased the speed up at a polynomial level so which the, this kind of factorization which would take uh, maybe millions of years in classical computing uh, it it will take now like days or uh, let's say hours okay so that's how uh, I mean, quantum algorithms, um, I mean, uh, has the, basically they have the ability to improve the time complexity and improving the speed up. No, so now um, the mission at IBM is to bring useful quantum computing to the world and make the world quantum safe. So this is very important. What is quantum safe? And then that is what I will take you through in the next few uh, slides. So uh, let me first talk about uh, what, what is it? Uh, so what are the things that uh, right now problems that classically we are solving and all the problems, whatever you see the related to computation so starting from um, from like uh, what you see when so when you compute you we calculate numbers you project numbers you um, then you develop softwares uh, you develop um, for example large machine learning algorithms uh, which are running on gpus Okay, these are all uh, class example of classical computing. Even though GPU can um, lead to speed up, uh, so but still it is classically oriented. Okay, it can solve uh, problems which are which only classical computers can solve. Nothing beyond that. But then we have uh, certain problems which uh, like the I, I, I was talking about factoring, discrete logarithm, simulating nature, simulating quantum systems, simulating models uh, which are complex in nature, um, then uh, manipulating complex data structures. These are way beyond uh, the hand of classical computing. So these are something that where the, where the role of quantum comes in. And this is this is where uh, the target is. So how to build applications? Um, how to build applications, for example, in chemistry, for a drug discovery, materials, you know, material process optimization, in machine learning, um, in factoring. So in uh, so in search and optimization. 
so uh, so here in the contribution of potential contribution of quantum computing can uh, come in okay and um so what why while con quantum computing can have big role to play in business as well as in so so society in general but then there is a threat to this uh, all the classical computers now because of the quantum cryptography okay and crypt the modern cryptography is under threat and that is what uh, we are talking about here so i was uh, all already talking about this this is a big integer that you see and um, so how to factorize it and the modern cryptography is based on modern cryptography and i will talk about the symmetric and asymmetric key so the symmetric uh, key is not that much so it has a uh, encryption and decryption me mechanism so but they are symmetric in it. they are or the they are have the similar property but asymmetric key uh, has a private public key and private key right and the public key can be encrypted by anybody and you can use private key uh, to decrypt the that particular one public key so now public uh, most of the cryptography is dependent on the combination of this symmetric and asymmetric key symmetric key is not so much under threat as the asymmetric key because asymmetric key uh, for example rsa uh, and dsa all these are um, based on the factoring logic more uh, prone to uh, attack by shor's algorithm right so so and shor's algorithm as i as means when the computer when the quantum computer becomes a reality the shor's algorithm actually will um, means there is a potential that it will be able to factorize a very complex number uh, in hours instead of millions of years okay so so now that is where all the classical applications are under threat because the classical applications uh, so what can happen now and we have to be ready with quantum uh, cryptography right away because um, what happens is that the classical applications mostly they are built um, on um, on this combination of symmetric and asymmetric keys and they are based on these large numbers especially the asymmetric key the attacker can harvest the data which is right now unreadable because they are already encrypted encrypted so it is not possible to read the data uh, right now but they will just retrieve the data from various classical systems and then uh, decrypt it when the quantum computer becomes a reality so this is a threat not for, for various sectors for example automobile sectors um, a big aircrafts aircrafts like nothing but a big server which has so many information encrypted and so if uh, i mean some of them are being built some of them like have been built already and they are supposed to be there for the next one uh, 20 24 years so how to uh, i mean uh, so this quantum threat can kick off at any point of time down the line okay so how can uh, the, the how can we come up with algorithms that can uh, basically provide safety to this cryptographic uh, modern cryptography so we know that our communications are secured, preserved. So many millions of banking transactions that are happening. We are assuming that no mal uh, malicious activity is taking place. Means, of course, we have algorithm to get means to to protect on that. But this kind of 
um, revolutionizing algorithms like Schwartz algorithm can play havoc, okay, with all these different systems like blockchain, financial systems, anything pins of uh, which which modern digital world in fact is is under threat. So this is where um, NIST in two thousand sixteen. Um, National Institute of Standards in USA, they had invited, uh, basically, they invited to come up with algorithms uh, to uh, basically, uh, means to, to, to uh, combat against this threat. So there are many uh, companies and academic institutions participated in this development. IBM uh, came up with uh, also uh, proposals on algorithms and NIST has selected four uh, algorithms out of which three are from the IBM's uh, proposed algorithms. And one of them is called Kyver and you probably have heard recently um, Apple has introduced post-quantum cryptography in their devices and uh, one of the algorithm that uh, is based, uh, it, it is based on IBM's Kyber algorithm. Okay, so, so this is um, something, uh, so coming back to the, uh, to the point where we will be discussing about what are the, so this, this is what the applications are. So apart from that, there are a lot of applications in chemistry, going on try means many researchers passionately they are trying out on using quantum computers to for drug discovery so there are many molecular configure configuration um so for a, for discovering the a potential drug for a disease so there are choice of configurations available but which one is the best so for that, you need to go, means it, it, it is like heavy computing power needed. So far, we have zeroed in one or means we do that with classical computing, but they are not the optimal ones, probably. There, there may be better drugs available for the same disease. Okay, so quantum computing can, has the potential to realize that in terms of getting the best drug um, that can um, be available for, for combating a disease. Now, I will talk about some of the courses uh, that you can go through. So uh, you, you have got the background, you have got the uh, idea of what are the applications. Now to get into this field, um, probably you need to start with the basics. And there is a whole lot of courses that are available in IBM. And uh, I will take you through that. So one of them is, I will just show you the one that is important here. Uh, yeah, so this is IBM's uh, quantum land, uh, learning dashboard. So you, you, if you want to learn the basics of quantum computing and how to use IBM quantum services and systems to solve real world problems. So these are the different courses that are available. So uh, one is the first one that you should start with is the basics of quantum information. So this is uh, conducted by John Watrous he is a wonderful teacher. He teaches on um, this. I mean, it, his YouTube videos are also available. Um, I mean, you can go through them as well. So uh, you should start from the beginning. Uh, there are uh, like four different uh, lessons that are the, I mean, they're single systems, which considers um single qubit uh, in and how to manipulate build circuits around that uh, it compares um, a single bit in case of how the classical information uh, and the quantum information differs um, um, information processing differs and 
it also uh, allows you to so parallelly work with Qiskit examples. Uh, I will also share um, how Qiskit works, means basically not Qiskit how it works, but how it basically, uh, how you can start with Qiskit. So there is another uh, website available for that, which is very, very comprehensive. You can start from the beginning there. And, but before that, I, I suggest you go through the theory first, then multiple systems where there are multiple qubits that interact with each other, and then how the information flows through that. Then quantum circuits is about the different types of quantum circuit, how they differ from classical circuits, and uh, what are the unitary mat matrices, inner products, uh, like, uh, I mean, uh, how to build entangled circuits, various superposition circuits, and then uh, coming to the more towards the application like teleportation, super dense coding, CHSH game, these are all um, dependent on the understanding of entanglement and entangled circuits. Okay, so, <clears throat> And the recommended background for this is um, Linear Algebra. These are the books that have been suggested, but you can go through any books, any any uh, anything related to Linear Algebra, Introduction to Sets, and Introduction to Real Analysis. So this will be sufficient for um, understanding this these lessons. And you will get a, you, you can take the exam, uh, which will, uh, test the skills for you and they, then if you pass it you can earn a badge so this this is one um, topic that is that you can start with um, the second one is uh, I would say the fundamentals of quantum algorithms uh, this uh, actually delves into uh, how to use the build the quantum algorithm it's not building as such like there are certain algorithms which already are there uh, Doyle's Josa algorithm algorithm like Schwartz algorithm uh, then Grover's algorithm Schwartz I already spoke about it and Grover's is also uh, like searching for until unstructured text so that's something also is is a very useful one and it will have potentially lot of applications. So understanding of these algorithms, understanding how the quantum in the information is processed in a way that we get a get speed up in time complexity. So the, these are fundamental to coming into this industry. Um, so uh, this this is the second step and you can see like what all are there here. Uh, quantum algorithmic functions, Grover's algorithm, phase estimation and fa factoring, which is nothing but Schwartz, uh, factoring is Schwartz algorithm. Then, um, uh, so, so you will uh, go through this, the basics, the theory behind them, and then you can parallelly work with Cascade to understand how it actually work um, in the practical world. Okay, so 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 then there is something called practical introduction to quantum safe cryptography uh, so this is again um, what i have talked about uh, in terms of cryptography how uh, how the factoring algorithm is revolutionizing the modern cryptography uh, what are the basics of modern cryptography how it has it is going to change later years uh, how to make your applications quantum safe? Uh, what algorithms do you need for that? So, uh, and what are the risks of not uh, being in the, I mean, adopting the quantum safe cryptography? So these are all around the lessons um, that you need to learn. Um, I think this will give you a head start to uh, the quantum world. So now coming to the job opportunities. So there are various types of work that, 
that is going on uh, parallelly. So for example, superconductive, so IBM's qubit is uh, based on superconducting qubit. Okay, so uh, so this is, uh, so there is a lot of, um, though it has achieved a certain amount of coherence, there is a lot of work that needs to be done there. So hardware engineers uh, are required who can um, help building this qubit processors uh, in a way that we can achieve better uh, coherence time. Coherence is nothing but if the means it's basically how long uh, the qubit is in a, in a state, a superposition state before it loses its quantum nature. Okay, so and that coherence time maintaining that is, is one of the key to basically build a, a noise noise or fault tolerant uh, computer, quantum computer. So then there is a importance of quantum software engineers. So software engineers are uh, very important to build applications where uh, people can try out different quantum algorithms. Uh, so they can build the user interface. And I would say it means it's not at all easy because you need to learn the basics and also the how the circuits will operate. So also the quantum SDK, um, I mean, the, so there are many uh, SDKs available in Python and Qiskit. So these are developed by the software engineers who have understanding of the quantum computing to a great extent. So quantum software engineers and developers. So then there are like quantum algorithm researchers who can who are continuously trying to evolve and uh, means start so means basically build algorithms trying to come up with new algorithms that can um, actually uh, move us to the goal uh, in terms of uh, going beyond classical computing and uh, trying to solve the previously intractable, intractable problems. Then quantum quant complexity theory is a very important role where um, people, theorists can understand like what are the what are the problems that quantum can solve and what are the problems quantum cannot solve. So this is something uh, I would say is, is another uh, area where well I means it would be I means it human resources their understanding about this uh, complexity theory is important and this skill is will be highly valuable quantum computer architects again uh, to design quantum applications uh, the role uh, the contribution from this role is expectation is paramount now coming to uh, so, so IBM started uh, the quantum journey, I mean, it's long back, but uh, uh, we can see means it was initially at an exploratory phase, which means a uh, lot of things, a lot of understanding uh, came in, but it was like 20 qubits, uh, not more than that, the quantum computers, with that nothing can be done in a, um, I mean, I means in a real sense. But then, uh, we tried running a lot of quantum circuits, as you see, two trillion quantum circuits, four means four billion in a day, and these these experiences were invaluable in understanding how to uh, build uh, programs uh, which can solve. I means it it may not have solved yet, but it can go there in the next few years. Okay, but now we are thinking, I mean, there is something called quantum utility at scale, where we are trying to build simulators um, which can go beyond the classical uh, computation. Okay, and uh, go beyond that and try to solve something which, which is not possible with um, classical computers, even before the quantum computers, the for real ones are uh, ready. And this is uh, the IBM Cloud Quantum Services. I would suggest once you go, while you go through the theory, you can parallelly 
go through this website to see what all quantum computers IBM has. This is an old uh, one, but I can show you uh, the new new pictures, new dashboard that is available, picture of the dashboard. But yeah, it is. this is the actual one. So you can see all, so many quantum computers are available with all the, the which one means the qubit size. It's basically the volume and the fidelity uh, means quality and the speed. And these are the three parameters with which a quantum computer is defined. So you have a choice of so many. Now, some of them are available freely. Some of them have a cost around it. Uh, but yeah, so it, it is like something that needs to be explored to get an idea. And you can build small circuits and send to them and then see how the results come in to get an idea like really what is happening there. Um, so... And, and then uh, I'll come to Qiskit. Qiskit is uh, IBM's open source SDK. It's, uh, it's used for manipulating, uh, creating circuits, manipulating it, optimizing it. So, um, so, so again, going to the Qiskit page. So there is a, a lot of resources available, documentation, tutorials. Um, so, you can build, start with small um, codes to understand what's going around. Then you can build small circuits. So, and uh, so then transpile, meaning optimizing the circuits. And then verify whether your circuits is working in a simulator and then run it on the real quantum computer. Okay, so, but of, of course, right now you may not get the desired result because of a lot of errors that are there. But yeah, utility scale quantum computer can um, are still is there, which can actually uh, use error compression, suppression mechanism um, to, to give you the real feel of the results that can come from a quantum computer. And there is the documentation available. So you can go through uh, how to start with it. Means it's, it starts from the very basic setting up and installing Qiskit in Python. Then it will handhold in terms of uh, designing and developing quantum circuit, optimizing it, validating and verifying, evaluating your quantum circuits and running it on the quantum hardware. Um, so, so, so this is like, uh, the API references, and then you have the tutorials, so many tutorials. I already showed you some of them, but these are very specific uh, examples uh, where uh, Qiskit uh, is trying to uh, help you understand like how in reality uh, these algorithms work. So uh, this, this is all uh, that I wanted to share right now. Um, so, but, uh, means these are the resources and how I started with, this is kind of a uh, way, I means I would say the sequence is like this. So I started with, uh, a book, uh, called quantum computing for everyone. Uh, then I went to the applied approach by Jack, he did a very lucid way of explaining quantum computing. Uh, this is a book written by, uh, uh, book means authored by Jack Hittery from Google and uh, this also has the approach and the codes are written in CERC. Google also has a quantum software library called CERC which is um, sort of an equivalent to um, I mean uh, Qiskit has much more appeal uh, because uh, it is continuously changing but then CERC is also something that can be tried out parallelly. Then uh, we have quantum computation and quantum information by uh, Nielsen and Chuang. So this is a very, uh, I mean, this is a, this teaches the fundamentals. So it, it is worthwhile to go through it to see how the gate operations work. Uh, uh, so, and also about knowledge around fidelity, um, density matrices and all those things. So. Um, it, it will teach you the maths behind uh, this whole operations that are done. 
um so and then there is the qskit youtube channel so you will get whole a uh, lot of resources there uh, starting from shore himself teaching some of his algorithm means basically his algorithm which is very fascinating uh, means it is coming from the horse's mouth and then uh, qskit summer school so lot of resources are available try to uh, participate in the future summer schools which will happen uh, 24 25 i mean it's all over. so so and then kiskit uh, there is something called quantum challenge that happens in spring and um uh, so wind uh, so it it happens in spring and autumn so you can uh, participate in them and then try to solve some of the problems that are given uh, so it will be very interesting. Uh, so then here is uh, this uh, learning page I showed you. Then there is another uh, open source uh, quantum training uh, where you will get some more resources around uh, quantum uh, like variational algor algorithms which have not shared so much been there here. So variational algorithms are very useful in drug discovery in chemistry and optimization so you will get uh, some exposure to that here so and they 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 also give certificates so you may try out them and then uh, there is a very interesting uh, quantum uh, tutorial that is there in microsoft uh, which actually means it it is like the japanese way of teaching by learning and doing so it teaches the basics and at the same time uh, the codes are there to try out and uh, then you will be asked to write codes in between uh, to see whether you, to reiterate your knowledge to uh, basically um, write the codes and extend them uh, and all those things so that's it from my side um, I means i would suggest that if you delve into this you will find this world quite fascinating and um, maybe right now the opportunities are limited, but it is clearly a future technology and emerging emerging technology. And if you are ready uh, with some of the knowledge now, then it would be easier for you to uh, get into that uh, future environment of quantum uh, quite easily. With that, I will stop on this. and. Great. Yeah, please, please, you are saying something. Yeah, yeah, that's it from my side with Signet. Timlish. Got it. Great. So great. Thank you for this session. You know, if any any questions uh need if you have any doubts or questions need to be asked, please feel free to uh type in chat. Uh in the meanwhile, you know, I, I would like to add a few things from uh my end also. So as we spoke about the successful careers in quantum computing and machine learning of uh webinar today. So I would like to uh, quickly introduce you to to all of you about our program, which will help you to achieve what we are looking for. So basically, I'm talking about our program, IIT Delhi Certification in Quantum Computing and Machine Learning. And this is a five-month program is tailor-made for individuals who want to learn about the future of quantum computing or interested to build a career in quantum computing or machine learning. With the topics like introduction to quantum computing, quantum algorithms like uh, Siemens algorithm, quantum deep learning, quantum machine learning, you can learn fundamentals of quantum computing and the machine learning. And it's a real world implication with the help of hands-on project with the industry experts. So you'll also get access to industry insights and also from a uh, guidance on the uh, academics from the IIT faculty via live online sessions. And by the end of this program, you will be equipped with various quantum computing algorithm. And also you will be uh, able to differentiate between uh, conceptual computing and also quantum computing. And this program will also give you opportunity of one day campus immersion at IIT Delhi, where you will get to meet your peers and your professors and network with them. And you can also uh, prove your expertise through the e-certificate issued by the CEP IIT Delhi on the successful completion of the program. And uh, if you are someone with a strong passion for the emerging technologies of or professional already working in the field of data science or analytics. So this program is for you. And also we have successfully launched three batches of this program and we will soon be starting our fourth and fifth batch 
So I'll go, I'm going to drop a link of our program. Like you can quickly have a look in case if you want to uh, explore. So uh, that's all from my end. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. And you can also raise your hand so that we can quickly give an uh, opportunity to uh, ask you a question uh, with our uh, speaker. I think we have uh, two questions uh, in the chat. Uh, I'm Ankit Arora is asking, I'm pursuing data scientist course and have an experience of 12 years in marketing and looking forward for a switch. Please guide me. Yes, Ankit. So uh, what I would suggest is that, um, as I said, like this uh, entire presentation, part of it was uh, to get into how you can get into the of this world of quantum. So if you, I mean, it's a roadmap that uh, I had followed and it was, uh, I mean, helpful for me. So you can start with uh, the basics. As I said, like I have shared the resources also and I can share it uh, with, with Times Probe and Vimlay's show that they uh, can give it to you. So that's what, so you can start with IBM Quantum or any other place um, is, and learn the theory first. And then parallelly, you can do the hands-on in Kiskit. And these, uh, and, and as a marketing person, as you said, um, so it, you need not delve into details of it too much, but understand the overall picture uh, how quantum can be applied, what are the different applications uh, in what domains and uh, that would be helpful for you. Also, I mean, uh, I mean the big picture view of quantum basically. So there's one more question from Mandakini. Uh, do we have a business use case served by quantum computing in the production out of lab? Yes, as I said, uh, I mean, there is uh, this quantum safe technology that uh, that is something that already clients are interested in. Apple already has a post quantum cryptography built into its system. Um, so, so it's like that. Uh, I mean, post quantum cryptography is needs to be available for every application, uh, every classical applications, and uh, so there is the I mean, where the customers are ready to I means get into this. Okay, so post quantum cryptography is something that customers will be interested in, and they are already. Great. So there is one more question from Anurag. Uh, uh, so sorry, there's one more uh, same question from the Mandakini. Uh, if you, if yes, who are the quantum computing customers? Like, did you want to know, uh, like, who are the uh, clients for the quantum computing? Mm. That's what she meant. Yeah, yeah. So the client is like, Vodafone is there, then AT and is there already. Telecom customers, uh, clients. Um, Vodafone is uh, ready to actually start. I mean, it's already they, they, there are so IBM Z systems are there in many of this with these clients, and Z system is now quantum safe. So, whenever we go with the bill of materials, one part of it is, is actually the bomb, is so it, it has a quantum. Uh, safe infrastructure principles uh, embedded in it. Okay. So there are last two more questions. I think we are running out of time. I think we'll take two questions. So Anurag Soni has a question. Hi, ma'am. I'm a mobile application developer with 10 years of work experience. So can I switch for quantum? Any career opportunities with companies? Yeah, of course. Um, I mean, if you are a mobile application developer, so you will... If, if you start quantum now, means you will actually, I mean, for example, I said that software developers, engineers are uh, application developers, uh, their skills are very much needed, okay, as a, in quantum world, because 
uh, only then if once you build an application only then users will be able to use it uh, and that user interface is very important so since you already have knowledge in this area you you are building these applications and you, when you also uh, acquire some the skill sets in quantum you can use both of these skills to uh, get into the quantum field where you can actually start as a uh, quantum application developer so that's there but but then opportunities are limited so uh, so right now i would say because it's a futuristic technology but as um, years pass by as fault tolerant quantum computer becomes a reality there will be whole uh, so there will be a lot of need for resources even now since we are moving to quantum utility at scale uh, where uh, we are not just waiting for the quantum for tolerant computers but we are trying with um, simulators okay so so that uh, means we can actually go beyond classical computers and get some uh, value out of it. So even there, then in so in in next four or five years, there will be a need for people uh, who who are already into application development in some form and can switch to quantum. Okay, great. Thank you. There's a last question from Srinivas. Uh, yeah. Hi, Subarna. Thank you for value presentation. Question number one. What does the cat signify in some of your slides? Peng uh, so the cat is, no, no, it's not penguin for Linux. It's just that I meant a cat. Uh, it's uh, it's just to its extros. It's not the ordinary cat. It's the Schrodinger's cat. Cat that Schrodinger has uh, thought about in his experiment. Just to give an analogy to the concept of superposition. Okay. So the last question uh, from Srinivas Sandhi. In classical semiconductors hardware, transistors are elementary unit. What is a similar unit for quantum computing? Uh, sorry. In class, transistors are elementary. Even in quantum computing, uh, so it's... Uh, it, so the, so the, it is another similar unit is there which is the transistor only uh, but it is built with supercomputing material superconductive materials in case of ibm uh, but there are like ion trap and other materials also available but right now uh, yeah that is that is the way it is got it i think you know uh, we are done with the questions and we already exceeded the time so no, uh, I think by this we come to a uh, wonderful quantum computing industry in such session. So on behalf of Times Pro, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Subarna for you know uh, taking out your time and you know giving us a wonderful session uh, on quantum computing. I hope all of you have gained a lot of insight from this session. And and same thing, I would like to thank all the participants who have uh, taken out your time and uh, joined on this Saturday morning. And we'll again we'll uh, we'll be again uh, get back to you on the next weekend uh, with a different topic. So till that, uh, take care, uh, stay safe, have a good weekend, and thank you, uh, Dr. Subarna. To it's a pleasure to have you with us. Thanks, Vimlesh. It's my pleasure as well, uh, and I would like to thank you and all the participants for uh, listening to me. And I hope this will be useful for all for all of them. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you.